All right, well, I don't want to clock here. Promised I wouldn't try to act like Bill today, so I won't. I'll just be on Bill's name today. But uh, we're, we're going to go over what we're going to do here. Not a whole lot going on this uh, particular time. Uh, we've got uh, the next meeting is going to be May 18th. Um, what we've been doing is kind of taking turns in the CAD area and some other uh, locations are going to start joining in and tell us some information uh, coming up. We're even going to have uh, uh, Julie come in and talk a little bit about some lighting software uh, coming up. And so we're going to try to mix this up and have a bunch of different people presenting uh, each each month that we have this. Uh, so this first slide here is just talking about when the next meeting is. So May 18th will be our next one. Uh, talking about the classes we have scheduled currently. We don't have any classes scheduled for uh, Microsoft Teams at this time. Uh, we're looking into ORD heavily, so we've kind of been working on that for the most part. Uh, so we don't have any instructor-led classes right now, but we do have uh, classes online if you want to take them. Uh, Concept Station is a fairly old class. I'm you know, working on updating that one to the most recent software. It does have quite a few new tools since this class was created, so I'll be working on creating a new one of those. We've got the hydraulics and hydrology classes that uh, we're starting to put on now uh, quite a few places with Chad and Ethan. Uh, we've got MicroStation Fundamentals is out there uh, in the Mo.U. So all of these are in Mo.U, even the Power Geopack Road 1. The only one that's not currently in there is uh, Road 2, uh, but you can watch the videos of the class and you can get the class files from us if you decided you wanted to try to take that outside of the Mo.U uh, for currently. Uh, what we have for you today is a, a once in a lifetime event uh, Randall Hoskins is going to actually talk about manually placing a border in our microstation files and try to get you updated on how to do that and the best way to do that. So, Randall, are you uh, ready? I know you're not ready, but are you? Uh, I know you're not willing. Are you there? I am here. Okay. Yeah. Um, so I will let you take over that, see if I can find you over here on this list. I don't know if I have to do anything special. I think Let's I can just have that. Okay, share cool. My screen maybe. Awesome. Does You're that on. That work? Yep. All right. Let me get rid of this. So Kevin wanted me to kind of do this overview. I think he wanted me to do this for some of the newer people and maybe just a refresher. Uh, I think maybe it's just because he wanted to know how to manually place a border out there. I'm not real sure. Yeah, I got so, a couple of cut, Randall. So could you hurry it up? So. <laughs> do what? I've got a couple sheets to cut this afternoon, so could you hurry it up? Okay. okay. <laughs> so to get to the manual place border tool, it's under the MoDoc pull down, and I already have some reference files referenced in here. So it's under the place border. Of course, since all of you guys are in design, probably pick a design sheet based on the scale you want. I'm just going to pick this. One inch equals 60 foot. It should, there it goes. Show me where I want a, a little outline of the border. So I can come in here and just drop it off wherever I want. Hey, Randall, real quick yeah. question. Is there any active geometry in this file? Is it all referenced? It's all referenced. That's all I have in here so far. I mean, you could do it on something that has files in here, but I'm just doing it on a blank file that has referenced in geometry. And now if I wanted to turn this border to where it may be lined up a little better on here, you just right click on your border reference. You can go in here and rotate it. It's going to want pivot points for the reference. Um, I'll probably just pick the center for a pivot point. Maybe mainly go out here. Of course, it rotated it. If you're done, just right click to reset it. And it's probably going to be kind of hard to work on it like this. So now you might want to rotate your view. So you can come up here to your 
rotate view. I'm just going to use a method of two points. So I'm just going to snap to one of the edges of the border, snap to the other edge of the border. You can see it rotated it. Move this around a little bit. Now, if you want to clip out some of this geometry, you can either place a block out here or under under the levels, sorry. If I go to the border file, you do have down towards the bottom all these shapes you can add, turn on and off. So like if you wanted the full plan, I could turn that on and I could clip to that shape. Here in a minute, I'm gonna do a top shape and a bottom shape. But if you wanted to manually go out and do it, all you'd have to do is go out, place a block out there somewhere. And now if I want to clip these reference files to the shape, you just select the reference files you want to clip. Right click over it. Oh, I mean levels. What am I doing? Select those in the reference dialog box. Go to the clip boundary. Select the shape I want to clip. It's going to click clip them to that shape. The one thing you want to remember if you create your own shape, you might want to place it on a level that you can turn on and off. Because if you ever go out and delete this shape, it's going to unclip that boundary because it won't have that shape out there anymore. So if I were to go out and delete that shape, it's going to unclip all those reference files you clipped out. So that's a simple way of just placing a boundary and clipping it. Does anybody have any questions on just that part? It's pretty simple, pretty easy to do. I'm going to go ahead and remove this boundary. Well, first I'm going to unrotate my view. So I'll go back up to unrotated. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then I'm going to remove this boundary. I'm going to detach it. Maybe this time I want to create a plan plan view. So this might be a little more intensive, but I mean, it's still pretty easy to do. I'll go back up to my MoDOT, my place border, pick my border again. And this time I'm going to place it somewhere down here so I can rotate it. And since I want to do the plan plan, I'm going to go ahead and go back to my levels real quick. Select my border file, and I'm going to turn on my plan top shape and my plan bottom shape. You do have a bunch of other ones under here if you want to do grid lines, cross section, minor, and major lines. But I'm just going to do the plan bottom shape and plan top shape. Close that. So now maybe I want to rotate this border just a little bit. I'm going to right click over my border, come up to rotate. And I'm going to rotate it. Just rotate it from here. Come up into here somewhere. And then I'm going to go ahead and rotate my view again so it's a little bit easier to work with. Just like one point on my border. Another point, it's going to rotate my view. So now maybe I want to clip out this top part. So I'll select the reference files I want to clip. So I'll select those three, right click over top of them. 
do a clip boundary. And I'll select this top boundary. It's going to clip it like that. But now if I want to fill in a plan view on the bottom shape, I'm going to have to re reference those files back in again. I'm just going to go to tools, attach. It was this one, this one right away. Attach those. And all this can be left at the default settings. And you can see it's still putting it up here. So now what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to move these reference files down to this block down here. So since I have them all three selected, right click over them, pick move, and I'm gonna snap maybe to this intersection up here. So I'll snap to this intersection, move these down here, put it on a near point down here somewhere. So those are my break lines or match lines. So now if I want to clip these three to this boundary, so I'll just right click over those three that are selected, go to my clip boundary, select my boundary and I have them clipped. So that's how you could do a plan plan. And I actually, oops, If I wanted to see the imagery that's referenced in on, um, I think the plan sheet has some imagery referenced in on it. So if I wanted to see that imagery, I could just select on one of those files. And under your reference dialog box, you have this button that says display raster references. I'll, I checked that on. It should. So the imagery behind it, you can see it's still lining up. It's still where it's supposed to be. Then on this bottom one, even though I did move it, it's still lined up with the uh, with this plan. So if I turn that one on, if my internet's a little bit slow here at my house, so it takes a little while. You can see that imagery is lined up as well. I have my plan plan done now. And if you needed to, um, if you wanted to use this for a presentation or maybe a, a signing sheet or I don't know, a striping sheet, you could turn on and off levels if you needed to. And then you could add stuff to these levels if you needed to. If there's anything else. Also, if you need to void out an area, you have options. So I think that's the plan sheet. If I wanted to create a little block out where the imagery is, you right click over the file that has your imagery in it. You go to clip mask. You could do a mask. First, I need to set a fence. I forgot to do that. Right click over it, do a clip mask. And just left click in a blank area to accept that. It's going to clip that out. And that'll work with whatever files you have selected. So if I wanted to do all three of them, I wanted to do another clip mask. Forget my fence again. Just do a left click. It's going to clip, clip out all of those reference files.
So are there any questions on? It's kind of it for manually placing the board unless you guys want to see something else. If you guys have any questions or. I lost my main screen, so I don't know. So Randall in the central district. Yeah. Um, one of the advantages of bringing your borders, clipping borders or boundaries into the file is that you can modify those boundaries and uh, you can, you know, you can maybe block out uh, certain parts of that image. Um, you, I mean, you can include as long or as short a section of roadway as you possibly can. Um, right. It, if you bring in those borders to the current file and just and just modify those borders. Right, yeah, you can do that as well. Yep. Just make sure you have them on a level. If you don't, like if you don't wanna see the boundaries when you're done, a level to where you can turn those off. Right, right. right. Yeah. Yeah. Anything else? Uh, Randall, um, I think Chris had a question in the chat. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out. Oh, there it is. That's the only thing about um, adding that second plan view at the bottom. Since you did move it, um, you would have to you couldn't do the station and offset on the bottom one. Um, would only work on the top because this this would no longer be accurate down here. You'd have to do it on another sheet probably and reference that sheet in that would be how i would do it does that make sense this bottom one's no longer accurate since you moved it the station and stuff aren't they're accurate on the original sheets i could still go in here and um like you can on any reference file and activate a sheet or exchange it and go into it and do edits there and it would still show up correctly here as well. Anything else? Pretty simple, pretty quick. I did have one other thing to mention, and this doesn't have to do with MicroStation, it has to do with our SharePoint site. We have moved our items, some of our stuff to the new location, so it's not under design, directly under design anymore, we have our own page. So like our blog, if you used to have an alert, when we, you would get a new, when we would add something to our blog, we couldn't transfer those alerts over. So if you wanna create a new alert, you just go out to our blog and don't act, you could actually click on one if you want, but if you just select over to the right of it a little bit, you can see you get this little pop-up. If you go to items, or I believe if you go to the list, you can do an alert me. So if you wanted to get alerted every time, you can set it up to any change, only when new items are added or if something's modified. So anytime something's modified on here, you would get an email. So if you had that before, you no longer have it, you'd have to go back in here and redo that. And you can do that on any of our lists or libraries. I think you can even do that on the calendar. Like Shannon said, we don't have any classes right now. 
But if you go to our calendar and set up an alert on the calendar, when a new class um, got scheduled, you would get an update for that as well. And that's pretty much all I had, Shannon. Good job, Randall. See, it was it was yeah. fun, wasn't it? Yeah, exciting. Fun. <laughs> I think uh, uh, maybe Chad had something he wanted to mention. He's out there, Chad, Mr. Chad yeah. Green. <clears throat> Can you hear me? Yes, sir. All right, let me go ahead and share my screen. Let's see if this works. Share content on screen number two. Let me know if you can see it. I can see it. Okay. I can see it. No, you probably can't see anything. All right. This is something that's going to be coming down the pipe probably within the next day or so. I just want to give everybody kind of a heads up. Um, and this kind of stemmed toward traffic and and the, the signs for like the focus on bridge and point of presence signs. They were noticing that the manufacturers for who were creating those signs were creating the creating those incorrect with the incorrect font for the actual sign and it just wasn't being created properly and so to eliminate that what is going to be probably suggested in this is going to be there's going to be an email sent out from the engineering policy group on you know guidance for this but kind of long story short is for like if, if if it's a focus on bridge project or if it's one of the other point of presence signs for your particular project, what you'll need to do is actually add this detail right here to the actual sheet and also this complete as promise. And basically, this, this just has all the information of what it needs for the sign fabricator to create that sign properly. And this particular sign, depending on, you know, which sign it is and also which which year and also which um, season it is, you would just basically copy, let's say, this sign right here and place it on a traffic control sheet somewhere or a special sheet inside of your project. That way that sign fabricator can create the sign properly. So that's going to be coming down the pipe. I just figured I'd let you guys know that. And to actually grab these details... I'll show you where they will be located at. There will be a underneath the CAD standard seed files design English. There will be a folder underneath there that's called POP sign details. And underneath there, me and a guy from traffic, which is Matt Lackman, we kind of decided on putting all the the DGN files in separate years. So if your project falls in let's say it needs to be completed in 2023 you'd go to this particular dgn file find that sign detail that you need for you know new roadway or surface improvements or whatever and grab that detail and put it on your traffic control sheet somewhere either by opening up the file and copying it or another method that you could do is just reference this file right here to your sheet and then just copy that detail into your traffic control sheet or your special sheet, and then just go back in there and, and detach that file. So a couple ways you can do that. So I figured I'd, I'd let everybody know that that's coming down the pipe here in the next probably couple of days. That way they eliminate, you know, that confusion of detailing the signs for the sign fabricator, because, because some of them what they're doing is, let me get to this other file that I'm actually currently working with. I'm actually updating our CAD standards. This is the actual point of present sign of what it should look like right now. But this is what it's set up in our detail. So some of the contractors are actually taking this detail right here and getting it to the best of their ability to fabricate the sign, which in reality, it should be this one right here. So they sent me a list of all the new signs that are out there and then we'll have those as cells underneath the, if it ever comes up, underneath the task, of course, design CAD standards, traffic control signs, and then signs, and then you'll see those particular signs underneath there. So, and then 
you see these are set up as dashes, which hopefully everybody kind of knows that those are set up as data fields. So if the user needs to fill that out, they would just simply come over that data field and just double click over it. And then they can fill out, you know, what season it is. Let's say it's summer of 2023. Then they would just accept that and then it automatically fills that out for you. So figure I'd let everybody know that's coming down the pipe. And that's basically all I was going to show. So um, if anybody's got any questions on that, you know, I could possibly answer a couple of them now. But I'm like I said, I'm currently working on that right now. And hopefully I'll get these all updated either today or tomorrow morning. And then I'll probably roll, probably push that out to all the districts. But whenever I do that, I'll let, it, I'll let everybody know. So sounds good, Chad. Thank you. No problem. Um, hey Chad, this is Shannon. Yeah. Yep. Um, one thing I noticed on the older sets that we had was the a lot of the line weights are zero. On which? Well, which portion previous, of it? I think when Matt would send them out, sometimes they were zero. I think so, I said I think I said all the line weights for the actual. You talking about the outside shell of the sign or which portion of it? I think on that other sheet that you sent that has the details. Uh, let me go back to it. This one right here. Yes. So we've been making a special sheet with those and bumping the line weights up and what? just making them bigger so that they could be read. Just, okay, I don't me, know if you. Honestly, honestly, I don't even know what they are. So let me just smart yeah. me real quick and let's see what it is. Yeah, it's all default, default zero zero zero. I could bump those to whatever, to whatever we think they need to be. Which on on these other ones here, don't have it open. On these other ones here, I think I have these all set to, yeah, roadway roadway sign zero zero two. Yeah, that's about right. I think. Okay. Which I can come in here, I can come in here and before I open it up for everybody to, to use, I could set all these up accordingly that way. Okay. Which would be easy. That way, that way it eliminates you guys to do it every single time. Yeah. And the other thing is we always make them, or it seems like we need to make them bigger so that they can read them on a hard copy. And well, that's, that's a little bit where I, I don't know what size to create in because if you put them on a if you put them on a traffic control sheet I can match them up to what the size is with, with these right, right here but with, well yeah with these right ah sorry I can match them up with, to what the, these are right here but if it's on a um, like a special sheet then the size would possibly be too big or too small. Cause like on your, your highway signing sheets for like, um, let's say like an interstate where you have a, you know, a, a signing sheet that has, I think normally it's like blocked out into four separate sections to where you add those details for like, um, ramps and stuff like that. You know, the size of that border, I think is either like a one to one or a one to five. So, I mean, I can yeah, make I can. these to, I can make these whatever size that would be most common, but there may be certain times that you may have to size them up or size them down, depending sure. on what size border that as you're placing. As long placing as the in. contractor so, can read them, that's all I was yeah. trying to. Yeah, to. I mean, I'm, I'll probably leave them yeah. like they are right now, unless you know, if everybody has an agreement where they need to be sized up, that would be no big deal on my end. I could just open up those CAD files and open them up, and then if the user had to, they can. They can still you can still manually size them. Excuse me. Sure. You can manually size them up or size them down depending on what type of sheet that you're working with. Hey, Chad, um, yeah. is there a way you can make those dimensions scalable? I think that's what I think that's probably the big trouble is that you know if you put those Well I don't know the, if you can zoom in is, on those those dimensions. 
But those dimensions, the they, can, they can come in really small. What do you mean really small? I mean, I'm I'm I mean, just taking what Matt's I'm just taking what Matt's giving me without me recreating the wheel here. Yeah, well, just these dimensions right here. I mean, they they can be really small, especially if you put the even if you put sheets on or put these signs on a sheet, you have to you pretty much have to scale them up so that you can read the dimensioning. The dimensions okay, here, but also what's in the boxes too. I mean, it, it, these boxes they can come in really small. And I was just wondering if they could be scalable or you know to. Uh, are they annotative uh, or not? Annotative? I don't. I don't think they are. I don't think. I don't think any of this stuff is annotator driven right now. Yeah, that that yeah. could probably fix that issue if you had them. Had everything be annotative. Then then Chad will have to recreate well, the wheel. It, it, <laughs> it, it won't. It won't be annotative because. It'll be rounder if you recreate it. I, I, I'm not recreating it. I'm not recreating it. I mean, if the dimension <laughs> can be just too, if the dimension can be just to our, you know, our standard small font size or something like that. These are, I think, these are smaller than our, our smallest font size that we have out there. So, well, I could probably bump all of those up, you know, by a factor of one point five or or two. Mm -hmm. You know, like I came in here and just. I can try this here. That's all I'll sell right now. I have to bust it up. But basically, I could take like this this section of dimensions and scale them up by a factor of two. That way, it's you know it's bigger. Would that would that work? Yeah, we've just been. I think ours we scale up enough that it fits a fourth of a B size sheet. And that's plenty big on the dimensions and it does. I'm not asking you to scale the numbers, but that's why we have to do that is not for the words, obviously, but for the dimensions on the letters. Do you have an example? Sure. I can email it to you. Yeah. If you and Jeff have, can, can you turn off your mic? That way I don't have feedback. But if you send me an example of one that you've done, I could probably, you know, cross reference that and then get these sized up to what they pretty much should be. But, you know, I don't want to go through here and totally redo all the dimensioning and stuff like that, because, like I said, Matt's going to provide me these details each year and I'd have to go back and do that to every single one of them. But, um, but yeah, just send me a few examples of ones that you've done before, because I think I know there's one that was done on um actually it may have been on your project jeff that that um fifty four project down toward the lake yeah you know that one there was added on there also so i mean if you want to send me that that d g n file I can look at that and kind of get you know the dimension portion of it sized up properly for these signs and and along with the um point of present signs okay. That way it makes life easier on everybody versus, you know, us putting these out here and then you got to go back and modify them each and every time. So. Sound good? Well, it's probably something we have to get with Matt Lackman uh, also and see if, you know, if he hands these to you uh, on a yearly basis, uh, maybe a. Uh, Maybe he can make these dimensions a little bit bigger. Well, I don't know if he can because he he outputs these from the SignCAD program. Ah, uh, I see. So I don't know I don't know enough about that particular program to where he could go in there and modify that. I mean, there's probably parameters in there that you can do it. I just don't know enough about it. Mm. But like nope. I said, I could. But like I said, I could take these dimensions here and I could you know drop this cell. And then make the dimensioning and this this block for text portion of it. You know, I can make that bigger. That way, it's you can read it on a certain type of sheet. Okay, but yeah, it's just I'm getting old here, and my eyes are going bad. So <laughs> I need all the help that I can get. <laughs> yeah, we're definitely not getting younger. That's for sure. But re, I mean, regardless. Thanks, but regardless, I'll have. It'll probably be out there within the next couple of days, 
but if we need to make modifications to this DGN file or the other point of presence signs that he's going to be providing out there, you know, I can go into those DGN files pretty easily and, and, and change those as, as needed to make it easier for you guys. This, this right here also eliminates, you know, Matt going in there and every single year, you know, creating a separate DGN file and sending it out to the districts every single time. Because these are kind of standardized signs anyway, so it'll be in this location and then the user can pull from them from there. But that's all I got, unless anybody else has any questions. Going once, going twice, I'm out. <laughs> all right. Um, I'll share the screen one more time here. I believe. And um, so we got this. This information is on the last portion of this PowerPoint, so there's not much to it. But uh, we do have some new folks down here you may not know. Uh, Tony Morgan, you don't want to know him anyway, but he is an ArcGIS person, along with Jennifer Weaver, who I believe is a real person. I've never met her, but uh, I'm sure she's very nice. Chad Green, we know, is a part of Drainage and... Little, uh, he does some uh, project wise stuff as well. Ethan, who I also have not met and believe he's probably an artificial intelligent life being, is part of our drainage group now. And then me and Bill, or Bill and Bill, whoever I am right now, we do geopack stuff still. Randall supposedly does microstation. Chris Wander only does project wise. Do not contact him for anything other than project wise. Project wise is all he does. Do not contact him for anything else. Survey is Jim Copeland. So we still have all these folks out here, and then Kevin is our immediate supervisor, and Steve Atkinson is the king. So if you have to contact any one of those folks, this is the numbers to contact and the people to contact. If you have anything else to say, you can say it now. Otherwise, we're out. Anyone? Anyone? Ethan, Bill you don't have anything to say? Month. There we go. Bill will be back next month. That's right. <laughs> 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 all right. Anybody else? Nope. All right, then we'll see. Uh, I believe it was the 18th. Yes, May 18th. So have a good one. See you. I'll just say this, Shannon. You won't know if I'm artificial intelligence or not until it's too late. <laughs> until you're on my doorstep, and that's it. <laughs> Very good. Uh, Shannon, your doorbell should be.